if I'm the GM, <laughs> yeah. you got to make hard decisions. This comes with the business. I understand that I had a relationship with DeMar DeRozan as a GM. I told him some things in the summer before the trade. But that's all part of it. I know this is your friend. That's part of making tough decisions. Do I want to trade DeMar? No. But if I have an opportunity to get a Kawhi Leonard, you, you pull the trigger. I mean, when you look at this team, I felt like Toronto was on a treadmill. You know, I didn't think they were going no further. As long as LeBron was in the Eastern Conference, and that's the way it was going, but now he's not. You could have kept him maybe, but that's what comes with the job. Tough decisions, and I, that's going to happen throughout the history of the I, league. I, I agree with you, Paul. Like, decisions have to be made. Um, it's the NBA. Nobody's untouchable. We all know that. We've been traded. I've been traded a lot more than you have. And heartbroken in trades. It mm -hmm. just happens. But there's a certain way to go that you could go about it. You know, um, you can be a little more forthcoming, I think, you know, a little more honest. I mean, I know that I'm, I'm close to the situation, obviously, through Kyle. He's like my little brother. So I know more than most people know about it. And I also know Masai. You know, he, he's one of the GMs that traded me as well. But we have a good relationship. <laughs> well, now I expect some juice here. Um, but we have a good relationship. Yeah. So it, it is a tough business. It really is. Things can be handled, I think, with a lot more respect. And I think that's where the line sometimes gets crossed when you sit there and tell a guy, I don't care what happens, I'm not trading you. You know, I'm, we, I, I'm not trading you. And then mm -hmm. a week later, you're gone. That's, you didn't have to say that. Right. right. You didn't have to say that. You could just say, listen, there's some things being discussed. There's some trades on the table. A lot of people are calling about you. We don't know what we're going to do, but you're a rafter right now. Right. And this is what we need you to do. Done. It's over. Now when something happens, it's like, all right. He didn't he did, lie. He did put it out there. Right. So it's tough business. Isn't I think it really there's, there's two tough. realities that we should know when we have this discussion. One, I think the Raptors were going to trade DeMar DeRozan before this February's trade deadline, one way or another. Mm -hmm. I think, like Paul said, they realized they needed to make a change. It just so happened they got this trade for Kawhi Leonard that came to them in the summer. Like, we got to do this. Even though it's a gamble, they were already going to trade him. Secondly, I don't know Kyle like you do, mm -hmm. but I've been covering him for a long time. I've watched him play for a long time. I've been at his high moments. I've been at his low moments. Kyle plays better when he's angry. Yes, he does. And whether he's angry at an, or an official or he's angry at a teammate or his coach because he got into some spats with Dwayne Casey now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If he's angry at his GM and he's playing, like Paul said, the best basketball we've seen, I think Masai Ujiri has done his job. He made the <laughs> trade he needed to do, and he's inspiring Kyle Lowry. Check, check. That's fair. That's fair. I don't disagree with you. I really don't. Right. Real, yes or no, though, do you have any concerns that long-term effect on trying to keep Kawhi Leonard up in Canada, that this will have some sort of effect on that? Or do you think, no, we'll squash it's, it's it? It's all right? about winning. Okay. It's all about it depends winning. on what happens this season. Yeah. Beads, well, they've been winning. Beads, if you can read Kawhi Leonard, the Raptors will hire you at a massive salary. <laughs> Nobody can What kind of salary are we talking? <laughs> It'll be a... I mean, let's talk about it. Well,